So now continuing with the same problem, we want to be able to construct a 90% confidence interval for P, the proportion, right? So that's what P stands for, population proportion. Right? So we're going to show the formula substitution and result. All right, lovely. So the formula. Well, there's two options, <laughs> right? So if you remember back here to the box, there's one on the left and there's one on the right. Now, if we have the standard error, if it was given to us, say, we could use the one on the left no problem. But the problem is we don't really have it, and we could have, I mean, we'd have to go find it. It would be this. So, ugh, you know, <laughs> it's the square root part. So we're just going to use the one on the right. The one on the the formula on the left is really more to help you understand what's happening, but the, it doesn't really help us that much when we have to do it by hand. So I'm going to write p hat plus or minus z alpha over two is the subscript times the big square root p hat q hat, and there's there's technically a multiplication in there divided by n. Um, so there's a little times dot in there. I think I actually put it in there. Okay, well, lovely. Um, what of these do we know? So that's one point right there, to, to know the formula. So I wrote the formula. Okay, so now here's where all the real points are, the substitution step. Hmm. Okay, so I have to show that I understand what everything is. So for starters, p hat is 0.46. It was right there. So I can write that p hat is 0.46 plus or minus... All right, the z I'm going to leave a little space for because I'm going to I'm going to find it and fill it in in just a second. But I know this is 0.46 right here, and I know q hat because I actually already found it. It's right here. Remember, p and q are complements of each other. So, oh, technically they should have little hats on their heads. Sorry about that. P hat and q hat are complements as are p and q, so it's all the same. So this is 1 minus p, so this is q hat. This is q hat right here, right? So there we go. So I can just put that right back in. If I can move my page. There we go. So there's a times in there, so multiplying by 0.54. And then we're going to divide it by n, but we know n for the third time, fifth time, it's 1, 2, 9, 3. So all that leaves me with is the z. If I could just find that z, then I'd be great. Okay, well, I know my confidence level, right? So my confidence level is 90%. So I can use that confidence level right here, right? So I'm just going to, I'm going to do a little work over here. C level is 0 0.90. So that means that z is, I mean, plus or minus z, and I would just use my instructions for critical values, right? You go to StatCrunch. Oh, let me find StatCrunch. One second. There it is. All right, so I click Stat, Calculators, Normal. I say between because it is a between. I put my area as 0 0.90 and say Compute. And there it is. So plus or minus 1.6449. Now I don't really have to worry about the plus or minus because it's taken care of by the problem itself. Because the formula itself has the plus or minus. So all I really need is the number, which is 1.6449. It goes right there. There we go. Substitution's done. All right, so now I actually want to find the result. Now. There's a couple ways you could do this. You could go type it all in. Sure. Um, you could type in this formula as it stands into Desmos, but I think there's a better way. <laughs> so um, if you remember back here, there are stat crunch instructions right here. It says select stat, proportion stat, one sample with summary. There's your path right there. So I'm going to make a note but I'm actually going to do it as well. So to get this, I'm going to use stat, oh, sorry, let me, let me put it in like a different color or something. There we go. I'll just write it right here. Stat crunch path. Stat, proportion stat, 
one sample with summary. Okay, so let's go grab StatCrunch and try that out. All right, so stat, proportion stat, one sample. And I'm not clicking, by the way. I'm just letting my mouse hover, and it just kind of move, opens up the next panel. And now I'm out of arrows, so I have to choose. Now with data, it would be, you use that one if you have a raw data column. You know, yes, no, 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 yes, yes, no, 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 like sitting there in a column which we don't have, so and we never really have it. So we're going to use with summary right there. Now this is what you needed x for, right? The number of successes, that's x, right? The number of observations, that's n, right? So if you think of the number of successes divided by the number of trials, right? That's where we're at. So this is the number of successes was, well, we went and found it. That's why we did this on the previous page. And I warned you, I said, you're going to need it for calculations. So this is the number of successes, 595, divided by the total. So I guess what we could say up here, it's the number of successes, this is back a page, divided by the number of observations. They changed it from count or total, but it's observations. Okay. I don't know why they're not consistent. What, what can I tell you? <laughs> so that's fine. Okay, so if I go back to StatCrunch, there we go. So my number of successes was 595. My number of observations is 1293. So this is X, this is N. And then I click confidence interval, right? Because that's the chapter we're in. Hypothesis test, by the way, is chapter 10. So we're in chapter nine, so confidence interval. And then we tell it the confidence level we want, which is 0 0.90. And there we have it. Now if you, um, well, you can play around with these things. If you want to look at a graph of the confidence interval, you can, but et cetera, but it's not strictly necessary. So I'm going to click Compute, and it always makes this kind of small window, so I always have to make it bigger so I can see, right? There's the standard error, SE. It's right there. There's the sample proportion, 0.46. There's the lower limit right there. There's the upper limit right there. That's the confidence interval. The confidence interval is the lower and the upper. The count and the total are, it cracks me up that they ask for a number of successes and then they don't even write it that way. They write count. So why don't they ask for that on the previous page? I don't know. But there you have it. So there's your X, there's your N, and there's your lower and there's your upper. So 0.4337 and 0.48297, right, if we round it. Okay, so lower, it always goes parentheses, lower, comma, upper. So 0.43737 comma 0.48297. That is your confidence interval, right? Confidence interval is, matter of fact, I'm just going to make a note. Confidence interval is lower, comma, upper. That's our confidence interval. That's the standard way of writing it. Not the confidence level, right? Confidence level is 90%. <laughs> the confidence interval is lower and upper. Now, a couple more things. If you type in the original formula into Desmos, you might get a slightly different answer, and that's because of rounding. So let me type that just so you can see. You don't have to do this, um, but just so you guys know. So if I take minus, uh, 1.6449 square root 0.46 times 0.54 divided by 1293. There you go. So 43720 that way, right? And then I can copy and paste and change it to a plus, and it's 48279. So you can see there's a little bit of rounding error going on. Um, so I try to know what students are doing and accept both answers. I think it's just easier to type in stack crunch than to do this, but knock yourself out. All right, I'm going to show how to use the calculator as well, but if you're not using the calculator, you can skip ahead to the next video. All right, calculator folks. So uh, let me grab the calculator one second. Okay, so we go to stat tests. 
and then we have to look through the list of tests. So we're looking for a one proportion Z interval. Oh, there it is, it's letter A. One prop single proportion Z interval. This is an interval that uses Z, get it? So letter A, so let me grab that. And then, like I was saying before, you still need to know X and N. That was true for both computer and calculator. So there you have it. Then you type in your confidence level and say calculate. And there it is. So if you were writing the path for yourself, it's one prop Z int. That's the one you're looking for.